So with the hair, right now, we have it, it has a lot of movement. It's going parted in the middle, it's pushed back behind the shoulder, and it's pushed behind her back, and you can see it over here. This is just what I like. Like I said, you can absolutely do your own thing, but hair is really, really difficult because you want it to have a lot of different tones and a lot of different movement. I've already added in a lot of pencil lines. So what I would suggest uh, you to do is pick a paintbrush and start with the darks. I like for it to look like highlighted moving hair. So over here I always have white and black and some skin tones and browns and then some other colors. What I would suggest is mixing it a little bit on the side first. I always keep this extra sketchbook here and that way I can test out what the color is looking like. For example, I just mix the black and the brown and this looks way too gray for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to add a little bit more water and get some red tones in this brown. And now it's getting better but I still want it to have a little bit of dark. So I'm just kind of mixing it until I find what I like. And that's why I like to work on these porcelain plates because you can mix and um, keep adding. So now that I kind of have a tone that I like, I'm going to add it to her hair, uh, keeping totally in mind that this is watercolor. And if I add it quickly and I don't love it, then I can change it. So I'm going to start where the darkest part of her hair would be, which is down here behind um, her ears and underneath her face. So we're going to add these dark tones right underneath the ear. And you're going to follow these guidelines that we've already drawn in. Always move quickly. You can always add more to this. It's really, really easy to just kind of think quickly and go. And obviously these pencil lines want us to curve out and back in, so that's what you should be doing here. Curve it out and back in and don't overthink it. I'm leaving some white space in the hair and that is because I like to add different tones, which you'll see in a moment. And I just kind of keep moving it around until I'm in a place where I think it's starting to look like actual hair. Um, I will keep following those lines. And if you follow the lines and if you draw right on top of the lines, you, you kind of don't have much of a choice with, with, with what you want to add here. You've got to follow the lines and you've got to fill in color. So if you've already done a good job in your pencil drawing, adding the hair shouldn't be too difficult. The only thing that's difficult about this stage is keeping it separated so it doesn't all wash into each other. Uh, that comes with practice, but of course, uh, for this stage, what will help is if you separate the color. See, I'm leaving a little opening here uh, where there could be a natural highlight, but I'm really leaving that opening so it doesn't wash through as it's drying. So I'm going to switch over to the other side now of her head, and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm putting in some darks first, and I'm keeping my paintbrush moving pretty quickly. Just add them wherever it feels natural and mostly over those guidelines because that's where the shadows would fall naturally. And I can always go back in and make it darker. I'm not, it's not easy to make things lighter, so keep things light when in doubt. You can always go and make things darker in the end. And again, just follow those guidelines, leave some white space so that you can see some movement. I'm mixing three colors for her hair right now. It's an orange, a brown, and a black. Uh, if you're a beginner, just start with one or two colors, or, you know, starting with one is absolutely fine. I like to suggest always doing two so that you can learn how to mix. You have to learn no matter what, so. Right now, we've got a bunch of different shades in her hair, which I'm happy about. Uh, the client makes sure that you know, they're fine with that, but I'm really happy. And I like, to, I like this pop here, so I'm gonna kinda go back and exaggerate that color right there. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's always continued somewhere on the other side. So let's give her some, some orange and some 
red highlights down here. So now that we have her hair, um, we're going to do a little bit, carry a little bit of this over into the highlights of her face. So I'm going to very, very lightly put in some orange tones from her hair just around her eyes to tie it all together. Um, maybe even around her nose. The nice part about watercolor is that once you put it in, if you add more water, you can just blend that right together. After that, um, we're going to just start coloring in the clothing. For her shirt, I want to keep it light and white. The majority of fashion illustrations will have some sort of you know, white shirt or gray or cream shirt, and they don't make a color for that. So we are going to just lightly add a little bit of, um, of the shades for that shirt. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Most of it will stay white, and we still have the guideline where that shirt folds. So we're going to very lightly just put in a little bit of shade there, and maybe under the collar, and maybe in the sleeve and the rest of it will stay pretty much blank. Uh, leave most of it white, let it dry for a minute, this will set in. You kind of want that to look like a crisper line. And then once it's dried, I add a little bit of water just to blend. And then that's actually all you're gonna do for the top of that shirt for now. For the skirt, uh, I think we're gonna give her something really bold because it's a fashion illustration. So most of your clients are gonna send you some really bold things. I'm gonna go with this really gorgeous fuchsia color. And the great part about watercolor is that this color that I'm using is really inexpensive. A lot of colors, to get the richer colors, you have to buy better paints. But what I like about the Reeves colors is you can still get these rich uh, pops with an inexpensive color. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a lot of water and I'm using a lot of color on the paintbrush as well. Uh, and I'm if I keep going without adding more color, this will get lighter, this color will get lighter, but I don't wanna do that, I wanna keep it really bold. So I'll use a lot of paint. If you like to see more of a watercolor effect, effect dip your brush back in the water and just touch it. To anywhere in that skirt and it will as it dries it'll kind of start to give more of a flowy watercolor effect. We're gonna leave the top part like that and hop down to shoes and a bag. The shoes uh, in a fashion illustration are extremely important so make sure that you are choosing a color that is bold and wild because you're a fashion illustrator Girls love shoes. So we're gonna give her some amazing emerald shoes since we're kind of going crazy over emerald on the blog this week. And just very lightly, same thing. You don't even have to fill the whole thing in. That's like the glory of watercolor. Just like that's fine for now. Two ankle straps, some pointy toes, and we'll figure the rest out later. Just let it dry. And for a bag, since we're doing jewel tones, we did um, this beautiful rich skirt and some bright shoes. We're just gonna give her a really great mustard colored bag very quickly at this stage because all the details will be added later. All we have to do is lay the color in quickly and we'll figure the rest out in pencil. At this stage, we are going to just add one more touch to eyes and lips, and then we're going to wrap in the third section. I'm going to give her green eyes. Just touch it. Don't even fill the rest in. And then um, for the lips, you want a, a natural base. We're going to add kind of the majority of the lip in pencil. So all you have to do is touch those guidelines, and we can figure the rest out later. So right now, um, we are at the end of lesson two, and you need to let this dry completely. It will dry fast. You probably don't need much time, but before you add pencil in lesson three, it really, really needs to dry. So take a break, walk away if you can, and then come back a little bit later. Uh, if you can't touch it, then you don't want to add 
anything else to it, but this is a lesson two and the end of that, and then join us for a minute for lesson three.